Welcome to Friday Market Insights. Today is June 18th. My name is Ian Lusher. I'm a partner and portfolio manager at Genesis Capital Management, and I'm here with Wayne Wishell, CEO, CIO of uh, Genesis. So, Wayne, what happened in the markets this week? Interesting week. Yeah, a lot of internal rotation. Well, what happened in short was the reopening trade got hit pretty hard this week. And why? Well, the Fed uh, came out more hawkish. They gave some visibility in terms of when they're going to start tightening. Uh, commodities, commodities, which had been correcting for the past uh, two, three weeks, got hit even further as China took some steps to slow down uh, demand in, in China. And on Thursday, non-farm non payrolls came out weaker than expected. So on that news with, with the more hawkish Fed, the US dollar popped. And when US dollar gets stronger, it hits commodities. And the yield curve, long rates versus short rates, started to collapse as long rates came down. And on the hawkish Fed, some short rates actually popped. Two year popped about 10 basis points. So the, the curve uh, narrowed. And that's usually a good forecaster of what's happening economically longer term. And so it hit, it hit a lot of the reopening. The cyclical stocks got hit. Um, economic stocks got hit and sectors like financials, industrials, materials got hit. And what did well, did well was the growth, growth names in technology and healthcare. And of course, value got hit as did dividend stocks. So it was that, that kind of a week where the main trade or the positive trade over the past, say, uh, nine months uh, is, took, took a bit of a haircut this week. We still think longer term it has legs and we think reopening will happen. <laughs> But a uh, bit, of a, bit, of a, bit of a pullback right now. Nothing ever goes in a straight line, as they say, and we're getting a bit of a, a pullback in that. So how did these market move, movements affect uh, our Genesis portfolios? And did we make any adjustments this week inside the Genesis portfolios? Well, yeah, no, we underperformed. Our dividend strategy, for example, it's a value strategy. It doesn't have, any, doesn't have much big tech. It doesn't have any big tech in it, frankly. Uh, it underperformed, obviously. It's got more cash flow driven. So those names, those names were hurt. Uh, what did we, we did make some adjustments, adjustments here. We dialed back our, we had been overweight in the financials, materials, and industrials. We dialed those back somewhat. Uh, we dialed back a bit of our value exposure as well. We're still leaning into it longer term. We just pulled our horns in a bit. And we think it's going to be, it's going to be a slow summer. Um, and we think the value trade will be more of a Q4 story this year. I think as you see the and we've got to get through, we have to get through past, past September and see what the numbers, how things shake out and, and get the, you know, everybody off the dole in the U.S. and get them back to work and get and see how, how inflation works out. But we're still leading into a bit, not as strong, into the value and reopening trade. Uh, but we think, as I say, it's going to be more of a, a, a Q4 uh, story. So you mentioned the Fed met this week, and I kind of noticed that it's like the world stopped for a couple of days waiting to hear what was going to come out of this Fed meeting. Can you explain to clients why uh, keen observers are so uh, holding with bated breath on what the Fed's going to say? And even when we likely know what the outcome and what they're going to say before they even say it? Well, there seems to be a game where the reporters try to trick uh, Jay Powell into saying, some, saying something he doesn't want to say. And so he's, you know, he's, he's kind of tight lipped, but he actually, he did reveal that they basically, they're going to move things forward in terms of tapering most likely. And, and the, the Fed dots, as they say, the expectations where they see rates out longer term are, have, were brought in you know, into 2022 ish. So those, there was a big reveal there. And then this morning, I think Bullard, another uh, Fed head came out this morning and said that uh, he saw things uh, even tightening uh, rates going up sooner. So they're out there, at, you know, talk, talking it up, and I think that that also accelerated the move, uh, downward move in ten-year rates, and 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 this bit of a spike in the two-year rates. But uh, we still think longer term into the next two years, uh, the yield curve is going to get steeper, the economy is going to get stronger, given the amount of money out there, and give and given uh, the government spending, and also this week as well, the the Biden administration is looking at putting a six trillion dollar package. I don't know how they're going to get that passed. And, uh, but that's that's a massive amount of number. Remember, they, the, the bailout in two thousand eight was one trillion dollars. Now they're just throwing around these numbers like crazy. It's just it's it's wild. But you know, the the, the point is, the vaccines are, are getting out there. The reopening is happening, and uh, you know we still. If you look at that, the value trade, 
the value trade does well when rates go up. So it, it does well as before rates even go up, before the, the tightening period, and they also value performs into the tightening period. So we think there's gonna be a long run of value. This is you know one step back and there's gonna be two or three steps forward going longer term. So coming out of the Fed meeting, we've noticed that the Canadian dollar's fallen um, fairly abruptly actually against the US dollar this week. Can you explain clients are always interested in the exchange rate CAD versus USD and what's going on? Can you exp explain exactly what, what has caused CAD to fall a little bit this week versus USD? Well, it's, it's more of a US dollar strength than CAD weakness. Uh, the Euro came off as well. And it's just the fact that there's a more bullish or hawkish uh, Fed out there and the two year rates gone up in the US. And so it's, it's having an impact on Canadian dollar and commodities. And oil seems to be holding in well, though, given, you know, given the fundamentals there. But commodities are definitely have a haircut. But I think we're getting to the, to the end of that. Lumber's gone from like $1,700 back down to $1,800. $800. Copper is getting close to $4. So, you know, they, they, nothing goes in a straight line, as they say. And we're getting a bit of a, a correction here. But longer term, we still think this, this uh, trade is in play. Last question for you, Wayne. Coming out of the G7 meeting, there's kind of been a push uh, for all of these rich nations to uh, send vaccination, the COVID-19 vaccines to these third world nations. The target was around 1 billion vaccines, but they've only sent about 83 million. Why is this referred to as an economic problem more so than a health problem? Well, it is a health problem too, but basically it has significant economic uh, issues or impact as well. So, you know, if we want to get back to normal, back to pre-pandemic normality, uh, we have to have the whole world uh, functioning uh, and, and, and healthy. And so I think it's, it's, it's a wise decision uh, to, to do this and, and try and uh, get the emerging markets uh, up and running again. Just it's, it's, it's good for the whole, for the whole world. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it seems now that, you know, we've gone through, we've got, fairly decent vaccination rates in North America that we should be starting to ship some of these excess vaccines elsewhere to places that need it, perhaps more than we do. So thanks very much, Wayne. That's it for today. And that's it for this week. Thanks everyone for tuning in and have a great weekend.